On this episode of Rock Rods Tech, we're going to teach you why aluminum is the best choice for your suspension links. All of our aluminum links start off just like this right here. 7075 T6 aluminum, USA made, and it comes with material certifications. So the reason that 7075 T6 aluminum is gonna be our link bar of choice is because you've got a better strength to weight ratio with your 7075 and it's easier to work with. All you have to do is just come up with your measurements, go on the website, figure out what the price is and all that stuff, put in your credit card swipe a couple days later, your link bars are made and they're on their way to you. If you get the DOM links, what's gonna happen is you still have to fabricate these things, you gotta weld them out and when it's all said and done, they're heavy and they're gonna bend easier than your 7075. You've also got chromoly as an option, but chromoly is a really difficult thing to work with. It's all gotta be specialty heat treated, it's all gotta be specialty TIG welded, and it becomes exponentially more difficult and exponentially more cost. So you end up with a better bang for your buck and better strength to weight ratio by going with 7075 T6 aluminum. When you place your order online or call, we're gonna ask a couple simple questions like how long do you want the bar and what threads you want on each end. One of our recommendations is that you do a right hand and a left hand so that when you grab the bar and spin it, it'll actually elongate and make the link longer or shorter on your joints. Here at Busted Knuckle, we sell chromoly Teflon lined himes that go inside of our link bars. The most common that you're gonna see for most of the guys who are off-roading is gonna be an inch and a quarter. Now, an inch and a quarter is a heim joint that just can't be beat. We've never seen these fail under normal circumstances. They usually have a one inch bolt that goes through, super, super tried and true. This is the most common. Now, we talked about that you know we drill and tap them to a certain depth. Uh, these are gonna get drilled and tapped to a two and a half inch depth. So we're actually gonna drill all the way in, then we're gonna tap down two and a half inches. So if you have a heim joint that's a little bit longer, please make sure you let us know. They are going on the market here recently. You're starting to see some that are a little bit longer. The next most common is a seven eighths heim. This is really common. A lot of rock crawlers and lightweight rigs use this. This seven eighths heim right here is a really good option for a lighter weight rigs who are just doing slower stuff. You don't have to have a huge high horsepower buggy all the time. And if you fit in that category, a seven eighths heim is a really good option for you. We're gonna drill and tap this down to two and one eighth inch. So if you end up with a heim joint that's longer than that, again, please let us know. Now for steering, we do steering links in 7075. We use either the seven eighths or the three quarter. Now these are both really good options. I've actually seen uh, knuckles ripped off. I've seen three and a half inch axle housings broken in two with a three quarter heim. And then we usually step it up to a seven eighths on somebody who sees a lot of abuse. So one of the important factors when you're buying your link bars that you need to decide is what diameter to go with because all these different diameters have different strengths. So how do you know exactly which one to choose? Well. Anything can be broken if hit hard enough, right? So your driving style has a lot to do with that. If you're the type of guy who goes out and goes slow over obstacles, you're kind of a rock crawler type guy, then you probably don't need as big of a link. Most of our rock crawler guys, they're gonna go with a two inch. Uh, that gives you enough link material on top of the bar and around the bar so that it's not gonna break at the threads or anything like that. These will put up with a ton of abuse, especially if you have a shorter link, like less than three foot. When you start going into a little bit heavier rig and you're a little bit more aggressive, you might want to step it up to at least a two and a quarter. Uh, the two and a quarter is going to give you a lot stronger uh, link overall, and it's going to be for a rig that I would say less than 4,000 or 4,200 pounds. If you're above that, or if you're the type of guy who really punishes the rig, go ahead and step it up to the two and a half. This is something that you're gonna invest in that's gonna be for the life of your vehicle, so why not go ahead and buy something that's big? Now, your upper bars and your lower bars can be different in size because your upper bars, they're not gonna take the type of hit that your lower bar is gonna take. Those are just gonna be like in compression and, and, and expansion. So. You can get away with an inch and three quarter or two inch bar on your uppers if you're going to be just building something that's going to take mild abuse. Uh, two inch on your uppers, we, we put these in 1600 horsepower rigs. So that's going to be perfectly fine because it's not taking a hit. Uh, the rest of the bars on your lowers, you just kind of have to either know some guys who have something that's similar or give us a call and we can give you a recommendation. But my recommendation is if, if you're a 
hardcore guy and you got a pretty decent sized rig with a lot of horsepower, just go ahead and do your two and a half. If you're a creek crawler, leaf looker, you just like to go slow and kind of check out some obstacles, two and a quarter, two inch free lowers. Once we know the diameter of your link bar and we know the lengths, then it's usually only a couple day turnaround to get your link bars out so you can get back on the trail as quickly as possible. First step in the process is to cut the aluminum to the right length. Now that we've got the aluminum cut to length, it's time to jump on the lathe and drill and tap the ends. Now we're going to take our facing cutter and we're going to cut the end of the shaft. We're going to face it off so that we have a nice flat spot. Next, we're going to center drill. You want to make sure that you center drill so that whenever you put your drill bit in, it follows that tiny little hole that you made with your center drill and keeps everything nice and centered. I always like to use WD-40 whenever I'm cutting aluminum because aluminum likes to gall and the WD-40 keeps that from happening. So when you're drilling these aluminum links, you got to make sure that you're using the right size drill bit. If you drill the aluminum links and it's too big, you could have a thread failure. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to tap the hole and the best way to do this that I found is with your tap and a live center. Take the live center, stick it right here and we're going to slide it forward with the tap in the end right into the material. In order to tap this hole we got to stop the tap from moving. So we use a crescent wrench right here on the back hand side, hold it with a steady rest, pin it to the table and when we turn it on it's going to pull the tap all the way through. Don't forget your WD-40 because you don't want it to gall. Next, we're gonna flip it over, put it in reverse, and pull the tap back out. Next step is we need to make this bar look awesome. So when you install it in your rig, it looks beautiful. So we're gonna take a cutter and we're actually gonna cut the outside of this bar down just a couple thousands to give it a really nice look. Now we need to turn down the outside of the bar and this part is very difficult if you've never done anything like this before. Your feed rate, your cutting speed, the tool that you use, the elevation of the tool and how you cut this bar makes the difference in having a beautiful finish and a wrecked bar. Make sure you use your WD-40, go on the outside of the bar, keep the tool from sticking. <laughs> I know that somebody out there is going to talk about how we're making the bar weaker by cutting the outside. Let me show you something. Those tiny little shavings, that's how much we're taking off. We're taking off thousandths of an inch, just enough to give it a really slick finish that you can polish up real easy. If you order link bars from us, this is the standard finish that you're going to get. Straight off the lathe with a little skim pass off the outside just to make it to where it looks nice. So this is what you're going to get. That's not a bad looking link right there. And you can actually polish this up really nicely 
but we do have an option for you to polish the link bars. You can go directly on our website and add that polishing to it. I'm not gonna show you how I polish these bars, but you're gonna really like the finished product. This is the finish you get with our standard link bar finish. It's just a mill finish right here on the lathe, single pass over the top. This is the finish that you get with our polished option for $60 per link. Now it's time to mill the flats in the bar so that you can put a wrench on it and adjust it inside the vehicle. So once your bars are done in the machining process here at Busted Knuckle, we're going to cover them with this sheath that keeps them protected during shipping. All you have to do is flip the sheath over and pull it off, but that's something that we do just to make sure that you get an awesome product. When you buy link bars, make sure you get them from a good quality manufacturer. Reason being, there are a lot of people out there who are just trying to make a little extra money and they skimp out on the materials. Our materials are USA 7075 and they come with a material certification so we know that this is a quality material. Another thing, when we drill and tap these, we make sure that we use the right threads so that it's not just going to pull out. And when you get it done right, it should look exactly like this. Just as smooth as it can possibly be, all the way in, you're not having a struggle, and then when you get it all done, look at that. There's no play in that whatsoever, but it's still really smooth whenever it's going in. That is the way it's supposed to be. A couple things you want to make sure that you pay attention to on your link bars whenever you've got them installed is you want to make sure that your jam nut stays tight all the time. If that jam nut's not tight, you could potentially get some walking back and forth, wear out the threads over time and have a failure. Also, you want to make sure that jam nut's tight so that when you have a link bar that's threaded left hand on one side and right hand on the other, if it starts to spin, it's not going to elongate the link and cause your suspension to fall out from underneath you. So you want to make sure that the heim joint has as much threads engaged into the actual bar itself as possible. And what we like to see is two to three threads maximum showing past the jam nut on the heim, just like this. Not only do we make link bars, but we make sway bar end links, tie rods, steering links, and everything else. Make sure you give us a call. We'll get you some badass parts that can take a beating. just for shipping makes it nice and nice uh, nice and nice nice all of our stuff comes with a material set uh, a, a certificate <laughs> make sure if you're ordering your link bars you get them from a reputational <laughs> so once your bars are being done finished <laughs> you're making me laugh i, I didn't do anything I don't know you what, had it i don't know what happened okay all the information on the lengths of lengths of your li lengths of your lengths lengths of your lengths Really? <laughs> not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make the video. That's not the thumbnail. That's not, no, the video. not at all.